dear student now we are going to see ruby laser so how uh, what is the introduction part for the ruby laser and then construction working under the characteristics of ruby laser so one by one we are going to discuss in detail so first let us see this introduction part it is a solid state laser why because ruby is a crystal right so by using ruby we are going to produce the laser so that it is a solid it is a solid material so solid state laser so ruby laser is a solid state laser so solid means ruby is a crystal right so crystal is solid so this is the solid state laser and which was first discovered by dr t h maimon t h maimon in the year 1960 so T H Maimon only first demonstrated the ruby laser in 1960. So let us see about the ruby crystal. Okay, so ruby is a naturally occurring precious stone. Naturally occurring precious stone. Okay, its composition that means the ruby rod is made up of aluminium oxide, which is made up of aluminium. oxide so what is the chemical uh, composition for aluminum oxide al2o3 al2o3 this is about the ruby crystal okay so to use this ruby crystal in our experiment okay this crystal is made into rod ruby crystal is changed into a rod okay is changed into a rod how they are making this rod so the ruby rods are prepared by pink ruby okay doped with cr2o3 to convert crystal into rod we are adding we are doping we are doping chromium oxide we are doping chromium oxide so what is that 0.05% of chromium is added into this al2o3 okay so generally occurring crystal is having the composition al2o3 but this crystal is made into rod used in this experiment so while making this manufacturing they are doping the chromium oxide how much percentage they are adding 0.05% of chromium is added into that so that it the rod becomes pink color and this pink color is important to produce the red color laser light so this is what we have to understand and then the specification of the rod that means here the length and the diameter of the rod rod means this is the shape of this right so here the length of the rod will be around 2 to 30 cm okay the length is 2 to 30 cm and then the diameter this is the diameter right the diameter will be around 0.5 to 2 cm this is the diameter so this is the specification of the ruby rod okay once again i will repeat so uh, ruby laser is a solid state laser why because crystal is a solid material so this is the solid state laser and uh, it was first invented by dr t h maimon in the year of 1960 ruby rod is a precious stone its uh, combination is its composition is al2o3 but directly we are not going to use the ruby crystal as such we are going to convert into a rod so while converting the rod it is the al2o3 is doped with chromium oxide that means 0.05% of chromium is added into this al2o3 and then due to this addition of chromium the rod becomes pink color and this pink color only responsible for the red color laser red color laser okay and then the specification of the rod is 2 to 30 cm length and the diameter of the rod is 0.5 to 2 cm so now you will have idea about the ruby rod okay so let's next we are going to discuss about the construction part construction of the ruby laser so now this is the diagram which is required for the construction so let me explain this actually this is the glass glass tube so okay so inside the glass tube they kept this ruby rod so here ab is the ruby rod ab is the ruby rod so the ruby rod is kept inside the glass tube okay and then here m1 and m2 i mentioned what is m1 and m2 uh, already we have discussed the basic components of laser in which i explained about the optical resonator system to amplify the laser we need this system so m1 is 
fully reflecting fully reflecting surface okay and then m2 is partially reflecting surface partially reflecting surface okay so here ab is the ruby rod m1 is the fully reflecting surface and m2 is the partially reflecting surface and then here one cooling arrangement is done by using this arrangement that means uh, liquid nitrogen or water liquid nitrogen or water is circulated in this experiment okay that is the cooling arrangement why because the ex while doing that experiment the heat will be produced that heat will be always reduced by this cooling arrangement by circulating liquid nitrogen or water into that okay and then this is the power supply which is connected to the xenon flash lamp what is this xenon flash lamp so this act as the optical pumping okay by using light we are going to pump the atoms that's what it is optical pumping method already we have discussed pump what is mean by pumping and what are the methods available out of five methods in this experiment we are using optical pumping method the source of the uh, uh, pumping is xenon flash lamp so the xenon flash lamp is just spirally wounded over this curved surface of the glass tube okay and then it is covered with the power supply so for example take your pen and then uh, that means roll that wire over it so how it looks like that here also we have uh, taken this ruby rod inside the glass tube over which we cover that means the xenon flash lamp is wounded over the wounded spirally over the flat surface of this glass tube and then which is connected to the power supply so this is the construction part okay so what is that construction part ruby rod which is made up of already we know that the combination is al2o3 which is doped with the cr2o3 right and then here the flash lamp is uh, spirally wound over the flat surface of the glass tube and then m1 and m2 are the uh, that means um, refle fully reflecting and partially reflecting surfaces here we are not going to use the separate mirrors okay the ruby rod itself is made strictly parallel it should be the end okay the end of the rod should be parallel and it should be plain and it should be silvered so what is the meaning of silvered that means sticking that um, any metal over the crystal or over the glass material is called the silvering okay so already the rod end of the rod is parallel plain and it is silvered so here this the m1 and m2 is going to act as the optical resonator setup right and then cooling arrangement is used to avoid the heating in which liquid nitrogen or water may be circulated so this is the construction part of this ruby laser next we have to discuss about the working part okay so now let us go to the working of ruby laser so this diagram explains how the ruby laser is working so first what will already we have discussed the xenon flash lamp is there right so the xenon flash lamp is switched on so what will happen thousand joules of energy is discharged when the light is switched on so part of this energy excites the chromium ions into the excited state and the rest of this energy will heat the apparatus so for that only already we made the cooling arrangement okay so now listen carefully the composition is al2o3 doped with cr2o3 right but here you see aluminium is there oxygen is there and then chromium is chromium is there but only chromium is going to take part in the production of laser so this chromium is named it as active center active center so already we know about active medium in which medium laser is produced that is called active medium so the medium is nothing but al2o3 plus cr2o3 but out of this only cr is going to take part in the production of laser that's what the special name we are giving to this cr that is active center okay 
so now the chromium atoms once the energy is given the chromium ions will take the energy and then it will go to the excited state so now first to see this excite that means uh, how many number of states available in this uh, chromium atom so first uh, ground state that is e1 and then metastable state that is e2 and then two states i mentioned e3 and e4 actually this e3 and e4 are acting as a excited state but these two states i am not going to consider as a two different states this two states states are very closely packed okay very closely arranged that is the reason i am going to consider e3 and e4 as a single state okay e3 and e4 as a single state so e3 and e4 combinedly act as the excited state for this case so how many energy states we have to consider e1 okay and then e2 and then e3 and e4 is combined together e3 and e4 so this is energy state 1 energy state 2 energy state 3 so this is the three level energy system three level energy system already i explained the population inversion by using three level energy system as well as four level energy system this one follows the three level energy system so before watching this video please watch the three level energy system how it is working so that you can understand the working part of ruby laser very easily i will give the uh, link also in the description box so now the chromium ions absorbs that energy 5600 angstroms that is related to green color will go to the e3 excited state and some chromium ions will absorbs the energy 4200 angstroms which is related to blue color will go to the excited state e4 so now the atoms are in the excited state already we know that the lifetime of the atom in the excited state is only 10 power minus 8 seconds once it is over immediately it will come back to the next energy state actually here by means of non radiative transition now listen carefully by means of non radiative transition all the atoms are simply jumping to this metastable state e2 so here it, it never produce any light simply it will jump from this state to this state that is no, that the transition is non radiative transition if it emits light then it is called radiative transition if it is not emitting light that is called non radiative transition so simply it will jump from e4 and e3 to e2 so now what will happen keep on the process is continuous means number of atoms that means number of atoms will be increased in the metastable state so when it reaches n2 greater than n1 n2 greater than n1 so that time spontaneous emission takes place so one atom will come back to the ground state so that it produces the energy of e2 minus e1 so this photon will go and induce the atoms more number of atoms in the excited state that is metastable state so that the stimulated emission will be triggered and then it produces the laser light of 6943 angstroms that is a red color which is related this angstrom this wavelength is related to red color so the ruby laser produces red color laser okay so this part we have to understand very clearly so e4 to e, e4 e3 to e2 will be non radiative transition okay so after that only here the accumulation of excited atom increases in which place in metastable state and hence population inversion is achieved what is the condition of population inversion n2 greater than n1 once it reached the lasing action is triggered by spontaneously emitted photon first emission will be spontaneous by the time it releases the energy e2 minus e1 this photon will go and induce two more photons in this then it will produce four and the four will go and induce eight like that so that what will happen now the identical photons will be emitted and then the continuous process will takes place okay that is the chain reaction so the photons which are traveling parallel to the axis of the ruby rod listen carefully parallel to the axis of the ruby rod are used for the simulation that is a stimulation while the other photons traveling in all direction whatever the photons are traveling in other directions will come out from the ruby rod which is in the form of heat so already we have the cooling arrangement to reduce the heat also so this photons are allowed to undergo multiple Multiple reflections by the optical resonator setup. Already we know that optical resonator, and hence an intense beam of laser 
and its wavelength will be 6943 emerges out corresponding to the transition from E2 to E1. So the emitted photon and the stimulating photon, these two photons are in phase with each other and have same frequency and are traveling in the same direction. So in this way, the Ruby laser is working. Okay, so now we completed the working part. So till now we have completed introduction, construction, working. Next we are going to discuss about the characteristics of ruby laser. Okay, everything about the ruby laser, this characteristics will explain. So which type of laser it is? It is the solid state laser. Already I said ruby is a solid, ruby is a crystal, right? So it is a solid state laser and then active medium. Okay, so who is going to, that means in which medium the laser is produced? The medium is Al2O3 doped with Cr2O3. Al2O3 doped with Cr2O3. Okay, so this is the medium and active center. Already I mentioned who is responsible for the laser production. Chromium 3 plus ions are responsible. So this is the active center. Medium is common medium and out of this which is going to produce the laser. Cr only going to produce laser. So that is called active center. And then which pumping method we followed? Optical pumping. By using light we are exciting the chromium ions from uh, ground state to the excited state. So by using light so exciting by excitation excitation by photons light is nothing but photons so excitations done by photons that's what it is called optical pumping and then to make this optical pumping we need source right we need the light so that is xenon flash lamp it is helical in shape helical shape just wound over the ruby rod okay so this is the xenon flash lamp this is the source and this is the method and then optical resonator generally optical resonator means two mirrors or two uh, lenses we have to consider but here what we did the end of the rod itself listen carefully the end of the rod itself polished with the silver okay so the rod itself acting as the optical resonator one side it is fully silvered and the other side it is partially silvered so through the partial silvered mi mirror the light that laser light will come out okay and then power output how much power is coming out 10 power 4 to 10 power 5 watts 10 power 4 to 10 power 5 watts this much power is produced by the ruby laser and then this is very important thing nature of the output okay how the output will come so already we have discussed the three level laser system if we use the three level laser system the laser will comes out of this experiment will be pulsed one it won't be the continuous one it is the pulsed one and the wavelength produced by this laser is 6,943 angstroms. Okay, so this wavelength is very important. 6,943 angstroms, which is related to the, which is corresponding to the red color. So red color laser will be produced by the ruby laser. Okay, so this is what you have to understand. And the main disadvantage of this experiment is of this ruby laser is it produces the pulsed laser. We have to supply more and more energy. Then only the process will be continuously going on. So applying energy should be more and the nature of the output will be pulsed. These two are the drawbacks that will be overcome in the next laser that is helium neon laser we are going to discuss. So now you go through this. If you have any doubt regarding this, you can ask me in the comment box. Thank you everyone.